everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a couple stories for you today. Uh, one of them is a bit on the speculative side, but also really interesting if you look at the history of how Nintendo has handled things on their social media accounts. And then the other one deals with Skyward Sword HD and a glitch inside that game that uh, yeah needs to be patched out, like ASAP, like right now, Nintendo. Uh, but before we get into that, I gotta remind you, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED system. That's right, that brand new uh, system with that very pretty screen that comes out the same day as Metroid Dread on October 8th. Yeah, we're giving one away, and yes, it is the white version of it. If you would like to win one, all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel. That's it. Nothing special. I mean, being subscribed is special. Joining the Nintendo Prime family, I guess that is pretty special. All right, folks, let's get right into this because, woo, let's get into the big, this is probably why you clicked on the video, is this story right here. Is Nintendo teasing something that's coming? Something that's coming that all of us would like to see happen. And that is an expansion of Nintendo Switch Online. Now, Nintendo Switch Online is really the worst part of Switch, right? Joy-Con Drift's also pretty bad, but Nintendo Switch Online, obviously forcing us to pay to play online multiplayer. Uh, but more than that, you have to consider other things. Other things like, oh, I don't know. How about the fact that uh, we barely get updates to Nintendo Switch Online? One of the biggest selling points for Switch Online has obviously been the inclusion of the NES and SNES app, but even those apps get new games like once every few months now, and they used to get a monthly, and the games they've been getting of late are not that great. So yeah, it, it, the we've been wanting, obviously, additions here, and a lot of people think N64 is next up. We've talked about Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask potentially coming to the platform through adding N64, but what about Game Boy? Obviously, uh, we've had Game Boy games or advanced games and stuff added at different times in virtual console history, but when have we really gotten the full slate of it here on Switch? Well, we haven't. And what makes us think this is going to happen? Well, Nintendo tweeted out this image, and this image is in regards to an ongoing series they have going on with Metroid Dread, uh, where they're digging into the history of the franchise and why Metroid Dread matters. And you'll see, obviously, they have four games in this image that they tweeted out, and the four games obviously being the four games that precede Metroid Dread. Uh, and they do talk about in their feature on this that you can play, you know, two of those games on Nintendo Switch Online. But that's it. They kind of gloss over the other games uh, since you can't really play them in any modern way at the moment, at least legally, uh, unless obviously you go back and own the old platforms and the old games. And those obviously be Metroid Fusion, which was on Game Boy Advance, and then Metroid 2, which was on, obviously, Game Boy. And what's interesting is that uh, Metroid 2 actually got remade with Samus Returns. And story-wise, it's the same story. So Nintendo could have used this as an opportunity to talk about how you could buy Samus Returns for your 3DS. But we know 3DS is a discontinued platform. So Nintendo's not really pushing that. So why are they bringing up the originals? Well, obviously, besides them making sense in context for why Metroid Dread matters, they're also using Metroid Dread as a way to advertise the old games. But these are two games you can't get yet. Is this then Nintendo teasing that Game Boy is coming to the Switch? I think it actually makes a lot of sense, by the way, to add Game Boy to Switch and to add Game Boy Advance. I mean, we're talking about two different platforms here, because technically Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, and Game Boy Color is one generation. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, etc. being another edition. So that is kind of the whole generation of two different generations of Game Boy. And are we going to get those added? Are those the next two platforms landing at the same time on Switch? And we're going to find out at a September Nintendo Direct. Possibly, right? Like, I think it would be really cool. There's, there's a lot of cool uh, other games, other franchises. I mean, we have Link's Awakening on Switch, but you can play the original or the DX version, you know, through something like this. Obviously, the Game Boy Advance and Game Boy has thousands and thousands of amazing games they could draw from and would really be a big boost, I think, even more so than the Nintendo 64 in some ways because some of the best games from Nintendo 64, we obviously know from Nintendo, but a lot of the third-party ones... 
yeah, it's hard to get those. There's a lot of licensing things involved. But when it comes to the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance, there's so many games Nintendo has control over that they would really have a lot of content they could be constantly updating to that platform for years and years and years, including reminding people how great Mario Golf used to be. Um, maybe Camelot needs to be reminded of that. But yeah, I think this is a very interesting way to look at this. There's a lot of fans. I'm we're not alone in this. There's a lot of YouTubers and other fans making videos just on this because this is sort of interesting. Nintendo doesn't tease their old games often uh, unless there's a way to resell them. They, they don't bring them up um, the way that fans might, right? Like fans might talk about, you know, the history of Metroid and stuff like that, leading in the Metroid drive. But if Nintendo's doing it and then marketing a couple games through Switch Online because of it, okay, why can't they market the rest? Because it's not announced yet. So I find this to be very interesting and a potential tease at the future. Uh, now, beyond all of that, I did mention that Skyward Sword HD has a glitch in it. Uh, that glitch, uh, well, there's been a couple of them, really. There's been the one glitch in the dungeon where the box gets stuck and it's kind of like a soft lock and you have to go back. And, and I, I, Nintendo, I don't think, has patched that glitch out yet. I personally didn't run into that glitch, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, but one glitch that has been 100% verified for certain is a big deal. And this one is where when you beat the final boss in the game, and I'll just say his name, Demise. It's not a spoiler at this point. I'm not going to tell you what happens in the fight, what the fight looks like, or what happens before or after the fight, but that is the final fight in the game. Uh, when you beat it and you're running the Dutch language option, the game freezes. You defeat Demise, and it just freezes on a blank white screen. You do not get the post-credit roll with the beautiful music that accompanies it, by the way. It's one of the best musical pieces in all of Zelda. And you obviously don't get the final cutscene. And the final cutscene's a huge deal to the lore of Zelda and potentially hints towards things in the next Breath of the Wild game, like the sequel to Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild 2. Like, there's potential hints there. And if you are playing on the Dutch language... You're stuck. You don't get to see it. Now, obviously, now that you know it's a language option thing, if you're playing Dutch, you can go change the language and get it changed. But if the only language you know is Dutch. You don't know English. You don't know Spanish. You don't know French. You don't know any other language. You're not going to understand the cutscenes. So, oh, it's really infuriating that this is a thing. Thankfully, we do live in the age of the internet and online play and updates. And I guarantee Nintendo's going to release a patch that's going to fix both the box glitch uh, and obviously this can't complete the game. At least the box glitch was one of those. Well, if you just go back to a previous save state, because there are like save states in this game, you can get around it. It doesn't get stuck every single time. But this is something that was happening every single time on the Dutch language option, and that sucks. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's something that you guys can get taken care of. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rubblejets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you all in the next video.